All right, well, now that we've got our mast fixed, let's take a look at how you rig the galleons. Stick around. Welcome to today's Black Seas Shipyard video. All right, today we're going to basically finish up the galleon series. We talked about building and painting, and then we talked about how to fix the mast that uh, end up breaking. Today we're going to go over the rigging. And today, you have a lot of options because these galleons were in service a very long time. Uh, matter of fact, the designs <coughs> basically evolved in the course of 300 years. A lot changed in those 300 years, so we're going to talk about it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the model and talk some rigging. All right, there she is in all her glory. All right, now, real quick, this is, uh, I've done extra things to this ship. This isn't just what comes in the kit. But we're going to talk about a few of those things as we go through today's rigging video, covering essentially rigging the ma uh, sorry the fla uh, flags and the sails. All right, as I mentioned uh, last video, uh, you know the masts were a little fragile, but once you got them repaired, they're just they're very sturdy. So uh, hopefully the rigging that you're going to also do will help increase the stability of those. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> galleons aren't a typical ship when it comes to rigging. Matter of fact, when you look at the original designs back in the 16th century, you're going to find that they didn't really use backstays. Uh, I've looked through, now I'm no expert on ship design, I mean just, I'll be frank with you, I'm not the expert, but I have looked at a lot of uh, museum models, I mean, you know, actual scale models, not just some throw together things to make it look like a galleon the actual replicas of ancient ships that were built to represent the real thing. Kind of like arsenal models. Now, when you look at the ships from the 1500s and very early 1600s, you're going to notice that they've got, you know, they've got rat lines just like all the other ships do, but they don't really have stays per se, uh, back, sorry, back stays. They have regular stays, uh, which we'll go over in just a second. Matter of fact, I'll have to you get a slightly different background to help you see some of those. Um, <clears throat> but one other thing that they do not have in those early ships were jib sails. Now the kit does not come with jib sails and that's why. Uh, jib sails actually were common on very small ships. Uh, like, you know, a schooner or a sloop, actually most more likely the sloop. Those size vessels, those types of vessels. That was the main sail, was actually the jib sail. But in the 1600s and early 1700s, they became more prevalent on larger ships. And that's why you see all the Black Seas fleets, their ships that we've got up to, up to now, all have those jibs. Well, <clears throat> the reality is the galleons served a very long time. The early ones are built, of course, they would eventually wear out and be replaced by something else. The design of the galleon didn't change much over the course. Now, ship technology advanced and they incorporated some of those changes into the design, but the galleon was really much, pretty much still the galleon. Uh, a lot of the improvements that were made in te ship technology transferred into the newer designs, and honestly, some of the older ships were kind of retrofitted in a certain sense. And in line with the common practices of the day, the captain of the ship would have complete discretion over the rigging of the ship. So he would determine which, you know, what sails are going to be on or not, and in fact how to use them. So, as you get to the later century, you know, especially the Black Seas, you know, the 17, we'll call it 1780 through 1830, that time frame, you can have a ship that has jib sails, but prior to the 1600s you really didn't. So you got um, a galleon without jib sails is perfectly fine. You can make the decision whether you want to add them or not. We'll talk about those in a little while. Alright, but let's just go through the basic rigging. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly how to do the rigging. I'll put at the end of the video um, some links on the, the end card to my uh, how, basically rigging series, right? Alright, so let's kind of just take a look at the ship uh, overall. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> now, one of the first things to talk about is the fact that the ship 
mast, so sort the of sails, there are three lanteen sails for the, the two mizzen masts, and then four square sails for the main mast and four mast. Okay, that's all you get in the kit. Now, the very first thing I want to point out is kind of an error that was on my kit, and let me go ahead and show you that error. All right, now <laughs> this actually taught me to that I've been taking the <laughs> Warlord sails. Uh, for granted, <laughs> to be honest with you. All right, um, there's actually two sides of the carding, duh, right? But there's two sides is actually more important than I thought because these aren't pre-punched. I had to cut them out and I had to kind of guesstimate the size of the sails to cut, you know, it's, it was kind of hard. But I, I found out something after the fact, uh, after I'd put on, I think, two of the sails, on the other side, see if I can zoom in and show you this. It's let's see the see the side that has the Black Seas Galleon sail set brown. That is the side that actually has the markings where it would normally be pre-punched. So if you you can see here along the bottom curve, on the sides and the top, you can actually see where they should have pre-punched it. So you can use this side as a guide to cutting your sail. Pay very close attention to that. Even on the mizzens, the same thing is this is applicable. They've got all three lines, so you can you know where to cut. Okay. <clears throat> so this these sails are going to look a little bigger than what you might find, because when I mounted them, I got lucky and mounted them so that the that line was actually facing the mast. So you can't really see that I goofed. <laughs> All right, that's actually a good thing. <laughs> All right, so the very first thing is when you put cut out the sailors, you're gonna actually have to cut them out following a, a line. So hope you did that well in kindergarten. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the rigging itself. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to the actual rigging of the ship, you're gonna follow the same methods I talked about in my uh, how-to videos and you're going to start with your stays, your mainstays. Let's take a look, uh, change the background here so you can see a little better. All right, there, that's a lot better. Okay. All right, very first thing, uh, and the best thing is start from sort of in the back and go forward. It's a lot easier um, if you do it that way. At least I found it to be, but um, you definitely want to start lowest first. So the first thing you can use any of these uh, stays. You're going to run from just below the crow's nest to a point ahead of it. Now, if you find a picture of a, a galleon model you want to replicate, by all means, follow the rigging pattern there. But if you're just going to go general, um, you want to anchor the stay just under the second ring uh, mastering from the bottom on each of these masts. Uh, actually on this one it's the third. Um, so you, they're not going to be all the way down at the bottom, they're going to be part way up the mast. Okay, And you'll do the main mast. The foremast is going to go right below the crow's nest to right behind the lashing for the uh, on the bowsprit. Okay, But behind the yard arm <coughs> from the main, the four mizzen mast, the main mizzen mast, you're going to come down to, like I said, the third or second uh, ring uh, band, iron band. And for the mizzen mast, you're actually going to bring it from the very top, right above the lashing, down to at the second iron band. And those are your main stays, uh, the lowest level. The next stay you're going to want to do is going to come right below the sail on the main mast up to right above the yard arm on the fore mizzen mast. And then the rest of them is uh, main to fore. You're going to have the under the uh, crow's nest to right inside the crow's nest. See if I can get that to focus. You can see it. Let me see if I can get a better light on it. You can see it 
goes right into basically this at the it's at the same level as the top of the crow's nest okay and then finally from the top of the main yard arm to underneath the crow's nest now that covers the main uh, stays now let's talk about the stays that go from the foremast to the bowsprit now one thing I forgot to mention um, with with these stays when you're going from the main mast to the top mizzen mast it goes underneath that uh, crow's nest. The thing is, that crow's nest is basically molded together with the yards. So you're going to have to drill a hole. You know, a number, honestly, a 70 will be fine. Anywhere between 68 and 72. Just drill right behind there, through it, and you'll get yourself a hole you can use to tie the stay off. Here you have some options. Ignore the jib sails for a second. And besides the one stay here, you can have, honestly, two more stays that go straight from the underneath the crow's nest to about halfway up the mast, or sorry, bowsprits, uh, the boom. Or uh, you can also have it right from the top to the tip. Uh, two more stays completely independent with no uh, jibs flying, if you want. Um, I chose to go with my typical zigzag pattern, where I start here at the bottom, Go up to the crow's nest, down to the main mast, up to the top of the yard arm, down to the uh, uh, tip of the bowsprit, and then back up to the top. That gives me a place to mount the jibs. That was the, my approach. Use the approach you want. This this particular style is more rel uh, more often found on the later galleons or galleons that were serving later. Earlier galleons only had just the stays with no jibs. There's no extra lines to run. All right, <clears throat> once you've done that, you can go ahead and mount the flag if you really want to. I decided to do a little pirate ship here because who doesn't love a pirate galleon? I mean, they weren't common, but, you know, it's our game, right? We can do what we want. <laughs> All right, now, when it comes to the rat lines, this is important. There's some things to... To keep in mind here. Now I talked in the last, uh, in the first video about drilling out for the back stays on the main mast and the foremast because those are definitely there. Now here's the thing though, again early galleons did not have those. Later galleons and some of the uh, replicas of galleons that exist today, uh, actual operating galleons, do have those back stays. So Again, your choice. Do you want to add it in or not? Up to you. Uh, I already talked about the using the channel to accommodate that, and I've just chosen to do that. So, backstays are in, just like in my regular uh, the how-to videos about how to do rigging. And now everything's tightened up, and now it's time to put on the sails. The rat lines are the last thing you put on, and I'll sh because it's a lot easier to work the, get, get the sails on without these rat lines being in the way and when it comes to the mizzens the rat lines go over the sail I know it seems weird but that's really how they were if you look at any of the models in any of the galleon designs the rat lines are overlapping the sail itself so we'll go ahead and mount our sails start with the back and work your way forward because these overlap each other. You start here with the mizzen mast, mount it. The the uh, back angle is almost vertical, okay, and it lays against the yard. Curl it real nice. The main mi lower mizzen actually overlaps that, and you can actually glue the mizzens together to, uh, to get their to get them some bit more rigidity, okay. Once that's on, then you can do the top one. And again, there's some overlap here at the top, and you can glue that together. Again, giving you more rigidity. Now, the rest of the sails are just like any other uh, kit. Uh, curl them and glue them. They work just as well. Now, again, I cut mine a little too big because I didn't realize there were lines. So, mine don't quite come to where they should. That's okay. I, I, they look good anyway. <clears throat> Now, when it comes to the jibs, you can make a choice whether to do it or not. The kit does not come with it. 
and that's okay. I was kind of disappointed not realizing that the galleons were kind of designed for the to represent the earlier era of sale uh, with the new hold fast uh, supplement that came out. Uh, the galleons I'm thinking of actually had jibs. So, okay, so if you've decided to do the jibs, you have to scrounge your own. And I went ahead and I decided to scrounge from the medium uh, color. Problem is, obviously, they're not the right color. Even the dark aren't the right color. But I went with this because that's what I had extras of. And we'll talk about how I dealt with that in a little bit. But for f the first thing you do is you pick the jib lines you're going to use, the stays you're going to use, to glue them in. Glue in your jibs just like normal. And start with the lowest one first, work your way up. That way you can glue if everything is works out properly, uh, spacing-wise, you can glue the second jib to the first and the third to the second once it's so that it, it just becomes a nice single sail set. It doesn't, it, it's a lot more durable that way. All right, once it's glued in, now you want to go ahead and fix the problem of having the wrong colors. Jibs. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I did that. And there's the key. Now I was looking, I tried to look at strong tone, compared it to soft tone. Uh, I didn't try flush wash because it's a little bit more of a redder color. Uh, and I did go with the Armour Painter instead. Of, you might have been able to use Adgrax Earthshade from Citadel, but I'm not certain if that's quite the right one either. You can test it on the sales sheet and see. But I went ahead and chose soft tone and again to show you the the look is pretty close definitely good enough for me all right so let's go ahead and fix these sails all right now i i prefer to use a i guess a strange little uh what do you call these? Uh, measuring spoons set. Uh, you can probably get these. This is a promotional thing they got from a local hospital. Uh, they went ahead and I mean I, these these were great to kind of be a little palette for your or cup to hold your uh, your stain in because these washes are really nothing more than a stain when it comes to these sails. So <clears throat> just kind of load up the the cup. <clears throat> And literally, it really is not too hard. These are, remember, you're staining, you're not washing. So, this is going to be done a little differently. You're going to paint it. You're going to get some streaks if you're not careful. So, you're going to want to make sure that you let it pool. You, you streak it the direction you want. Okay. And try to avoid those big big pools. Pull them down until they blend into the darker bottoms. Okay. Okay. And work your way all the way down. And then do that for each of the sails. You can dab it on there to get it to get it to pull somewhat, so you get a nice little pocket, if you will, of stain, and then you can use that to like feather it out. Okay, and you'll be able to get the edges here. Wherever you see the white, especially around the edges of the sails, you're going to go ahead and put some more of this. And you might be, may have to go over it a couple times, but just be patient. 
I'm not going to make any comments about happy little sales here, but you really, this is a very low-key type of a uh, work. Just keep it going simple. Be patient. Don't rush it. You've got time while it sets, so you can feather it a lot so that it, you can see how the middle one didn't quite come out the way I like it, so I'm going to go back over it again. And the pool down here, so I'm going to pull that up and bring it back up here. And where you may have some difficulty is probably where there's some super glue laying. But as long as it's relatively even and long strokes, it's not going to be so bad. And then you just leave it there to dry. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at it. This one is dry. All right, we're fairly close to being dry. <clears throat> There's the side that I started showing you, you know, where it's already done. And here's what it looks like. Colors very, match very closely. I'm gonna go ahead and take this light off of it. Give you another perspective. It's very close. It, it blends in very well. So that's one way you can approach the jibs if you really want to. And of course, I was looking for that, so I went ahead and did that. All right. <clears throat> now let's talk rat lines because these are the ones that you got. There's a couple things you need to pay attention to. All right, so you're going to get a set of, you know, friggin' brig sails. Or, sorry, rat, rat lines, right? Uh, I have a couple of these laying around. And I use the friggin' one out of this, and I work on another. I took stuff off of a different list, uh, set of brig rat lines, so that's why you don't see it on here. We're going to talk about which rat lines to use on which mast and what you might need to do to each of them, okay? So we're going to start with... <clears throat> What I like to do is start with the ink, the foremast, okay, right up front. Now, you're going to use the frigate foremast, which, okay, on the card are these two in the middle, okay, and you can use those. Now, here's the thing if you notice, remember from our initial description, discussion and how to build the guy in. The foremast is slightly at an angle. In addition, I'm going to point to right here is the end of the channel, which is where the rat lines mount. However, that is behind the point where the foremast mounts. So the rat lines are all behind the mast. If you just mount these straight like you should, they're going to meet up in the middle of the air, and that's not where you want. So. You actually need to cut these the rat lines at the bottom in order to get them to fit properly. Now I didn't notice this at first, so this side is mounted. You can see how it goes down beyond the rat the uh, channel, but on this side, I went ahead and cut it, and it lays along the entire channel. Now, the way I did that is I went ahead and I cut from, and I'm going to go ahead and I put an image on the screen here, make it a little easier to see. I cut from the, what I'm going to call the foremost, the frontmost uh, mounting uh, pulley on the uh, or block and tackle on the rat line, <clears throat> the one on top down to the on the bottom of the one furthest back. So you'll see that nice straight line there. You cut along there and that will line up your rat line so that it leans up against the mast at the proper angle. And that is appropriate for the galleons. Galleons rat lines were angled. They weren't straight up the mast uh, because that's at least not all of them. Okay. Now, mainmast, that's very easy. That's the frigate mainmast, which is the uh, obviously the largest set in here. And 
they just mount normally. Now with these, the channel goes ahead of the mounting point base of the mast. So you can fit these on just like any other uh, set of rat lines. No, nothing you need to pay attention to there. Now all of these are going to be right underneath the, or close to underneath the uh, crow's nest. Now the thing is, the rat lines aren't quite long enough to reach the crow's nest in either case. So you're going to fall just a little bit short. That's okay. Just, just know that and know where you're going to be mounting the glue for that. Now it gets to the rear two masts. Now you've got some some challenges. Not, not really hard, but there are no channels to mount these two. In on a galleon, these were basically mounted right to the outside of these railings, uh, right in, in, under the hull. Okay, so you're going to just place them down to the bottom, uh, right along these uh, railings. Right. The thing is, both of these are going to require you to get the to cut your um, rat lines. This one's going to be cut short. And this is going to be a cut in half. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, in both cases, you're going to have to cut the bottom so that it lines up kind of flush with the bottom of the, the railing there. And since both of these masts are leaning backward, and these railings are coming up at an angle, you're also going to have to kind of trim the bottom at an angle. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right. Let's talk first about the main, the, four, the main mizzen mast. Right here, you're going to actually use. I, I was mis misspoke before. You're going to use the frigate mizzen rat lines, and you're going to have to cut those quite a bit shorter. Okay. You can see how much shorter. Okay. It actually amounts to about three quarter of an inch. Um, Sorry, this is a three-quarter inch tall rat line. So you're going to measure from the bottom, and you're going to measure three and a quarter and quarter inches up, three quarters of an inch up, and cut it off. And then you're going to have the uh, be able to mount it. <clears throat> now, before you mount it, though, just like with the foremast, you're going to need to trim these the bottom at an angle. And just like you did with the other one, you're going to mount. You're going to basically draw a line from the bottom of the rearmost uh, block and tackle, top block and tackle, to the bottom of the foremost block and tackle. And that will get you that angle, even though it's going straight up from the hull to the main, uh, the, the crow's nest. Notice it's not following the angle of the mast. It's coming straight down from the crow's nest to the hull. Okay. Now, as I said before, this will go over the top of the lanteen sail here and over the yard arm here. Okay. Now, for the back rear rat lines, these are the strangest ones because every galleon I've seen has an extreme angle. It almost mirror, mirrors the slope of the mast itself. Now here, you're actually going to use the mizzen mast uh, rat lines from the brig. And those are obviously the, the smaller of the two that are in, the, in between, in the center. The thing is, those are obviously a lot wider. What you have to do is cut them in half. So you're going to have to cut right between the two blocks, blocks and tackles here in the middle, straight up, hugging the rear. I'll show you. Here's a picture, kind of a drawing. You're going to cut right here, and this is the. You're going to retain. You're going to keep that rearmost part, and you're going to get rid of this, the foremost part of that rat line set. Okay. Same thing on the other side. It's just in reverse. All right, so once you do that, 
again, because of that tremendous angle, you're going to need to do kind of a trim at the base to kind of match that angle. So, <clears throat> the thing is, these are, t these are actually f um, mounted leaning backward, kind of following the mast a little bit. The f furthest, the furthest rear part of the rat line parallels the mast. The forwardmost rat line, you know, is sloping more toward the mast. Now, the way, in order, this this really because there is no, what do you call this, uh, crow's nest here on the back one, you only have this lashing, it's going to be kind of hard to, quote, hide the joint, so don't try. Just go ahead and make sure this is long enough to reach up and get just above the lashing on that yard arm, okay, on both sides. Glue it all the way up there, so you're actually going to glue it to the lashing, and if you use a gap filling super glue, you can kind of fill in right behind it where the uh, rigging stay is and then it'll give it a little, much, a little more strength up there but once you get down here to the bottom you're going to want to trim this at an angle as well much as you did in the previous uh, couple the the foremast and the main mizzen mast you're going to want to angle it so that it kind of hugs the railing at the proper angle that if you look at it's kind of like the same same kind of method just below the rearmost, or I guess it would end up being forwardmost uh, uh, part of the uh, block and tackle to just essentially right, I guess almost on or just below the forwardmost. So go ahead, I'll go ahead and here's, here's the image. That's the drawing to make it look, that's kind of where you cut, okay? And then you just go ahead and glue it on like you would any other rat line, and now you're done. That's that's really all there is. Now let's talk about the flags, though. Flags on here, really, you have some options, you know. And again, it, it's whatever you want to do. Personally, I kind of like the look of the pirate flag being all the way up here. I didn't want a little flag to be up on this top of the main uh, main mast here. I wanted the larger flag, and there was plenty of room here, so I just ran. A tan line from a tan, tan thread from down here on top of that uh, mizzen stay to right up, basically just below the tip of the mast and then looped the flag through it and then glued it with using white glue. Uh, <clears throat> that's just the way I did it. Now you could just as easily put a flag staff, you have to drill a hole and mount a pin put a flag staff here because honestly that's how they were uh, they, have, they were flagged. Matter of fact <clears throat> right off the bowsprit very tip there was a bracket and a flag staff coming up straight off the bows, bowsprit's tip and they'd have another flag there <laughs> which I wasn't about to drill into the, the tip of that so I'm ignoring that. But So you could run a flag staff here like you can if you want or Again, just like any, you run the line from the back of the lanteen or the top of this uh, mizzen mast down to the center of the, the back railing, and then run your uh, you know, hook your flag to that. That is how you could also mount your flag if you wanted to. Now, if it's uh, supposed to be a merchant ship as part of a merchant navy, I mean, sure, you could actually put a, the flag up here if you want. Do what looks right to you. Uh, I don't know of any regulations around the merchant fleets, uh, just as long as they had a flag staff and were able to, you know, show their national colors, as according to uh, what went for uh, international law at the time. So anyway, that's all there really is to rigging up the galleons. They're not hard. There's more mass, there's a little more work to do. The rat lines are the most complicated part, but they actually are one of the most distinctive parts of the galleon because they're not normal. I mean, the front one is leaning forward, the main is normal uh, vertical, the last two are 
angled and they don't go all the way down to channels they go right to the railing and but they look good when it's all done and there you go you've got yourself one galleon so now I'm gonna mention one thing here at the end uh, some galleon models I'm sorry when I say models I mean in museums do not have a figurehead and if you were to leave the figurehead off this is just for you know information I probably should have mentioned this in the first video but honestly never really thought about it uh, because I love figureheads but the early galleons just had the beak they don't really necessarily have a figurehead few of them actually did the early early ones and so you don't need to mount the figurehead if you don't want to and it still will look right and I love the way Warlord designed this model so that if you left the figurehead off the beak of the galleon looks intact and doesn't look like it's missing anything so kudos to them but there you go you've got a finished galleon all ready to ply the seas and hopefully in this case it's going to raid some merchants and hopefully it's not going to get sunk by uh those uh royal navy uh you know do-gooders <laughs> all right all right so hope this kind of gives you a nice rounded picture of how you build these galleons and what you can do with them and if you if it helped you, great. Please share, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.